All right, so there's one last thing before we are ready to make this code production ready. Um, and that is we want a way to extract the CSS we're creating into its own CSS file. Um, so remember that the way we've been doing things up until now is with the style loader. And what the style loader does is anytime it uh, sees that you're importing or requiring a CSS file, it will basically put it into a string. And uh, when the DOM is loaded, the style loader has JavaScript code to then create a style tag, inject it into the head, and then put the contents of that module, the contents being the CSS, and put it into that style tag, right? So that's, that's pretty great. But there's disadvantages to that that I'm sure you're aware of. Um, the main one being um, flash of unstyled content, as it's officially known, um, which is basically that if your styles, right, are dependent on JavaScript, then your page will not receive those styles until the style loader kicks in and uh, creates that style tag, right? So if your page is totally blank without JavaScript, this might kind of work, but either way, it's not very ideal because your styles are increasing the bundle size of your JavaScript. So the browser has the ability to download files in parallel, right? So ideally, you know, the common practice is to place CSS files in the head so that they can be rendered first and then uh, JavaScript files near the end, right? So although Webpack is great and doing this awesome thing for us for development and it's super fast when it comes to uh, rebuilding and stuff, it's not how we want our final product to be. Um, so what we're going to do is there's this great plugin called the, uh, extract text plugin. So as always, let's open up my package JSON. So you're going to want to, uh, NPM install extract text webpack plugin. Um, there, if you're on, if you're on webpack one, it's under a different name. So definitely check that out. Uh, it's in the webpack docs, but uh, if you just installed this one, Extract Text Webpack Plugin, uh, you're going to get the Webpack 2 version. So just be aware of that. Um, right. So now in the Webpack config, we're going to re require in the, the node module. Um, and I'm just uh, saving it as ETP because I hate long names. <laughs> um, right. So the first thing uh, we need to do is set up the extract text plugin in the loader. Um, and it's pretty simple. All you do is do an ETP or whatever you call the extract text plugin as a variable and call the oops extract method off of it. And the extract method takes in an object for configuration. And uh, the if you're by the way, if you're on Webpack one, this is what it used to look like. It would be uh, takes the uh, extract. Uh, it's just a function call. The first argument would be uh, the fallback loader, which is the style loader, which I'll explain in a second. And the second argument is your, your other loaders. So if you're in Webpack 1, that's how you do it. Um, and I've noticed that with Webpack 2, even the error messages are so much more helpful. Um, I, I did this at first, and it corrected me and reminded me that I had to use this new format for the extract text plugin. Anyways, so what does this mean? Basically, remember the style loader is just to uh, extract our CSS module and inject it into a style tag, which we don't want to do anymore. We want to just pull out that CSS contents and actually save it into a file. Um, so as you can imagine, this uh, we don't need, right? So that's why we pass that as a fallback. And this is the actual plugin or loader chain that we're going to use. So these, uh, so when we're requiring a CSS file, we run it through SAS first, then we run it through the CSS loader, and that then gets extracted during the build process into its own file. So we set up the loader there, and now we need to add it to our plugins chain, which is starting to grow, but um, it's okay for now. So uh, if you're just extracting to one CSS file, um, then all you have to do is pass in the name of the file name that you want it to be 
output it to, right? So I could, I'm gonna, so I've been calling it styles, right? So I can just leave it styles CSS. I can call it styles built, whatever you wanna call the file. And it's just gonna get put right into your output directory, right? So my output path is this, so it's gonna go right there, right? Um, right, so you might be, well, let's run this and then I'll explain as we go. Um, open up my console. Okay. All right, so it's outputted everything. And let's just look at the output here. So we've got the typical stuff, um, our JS files, but now you'll see we actually have the styles.css file. Um, so let's open this up here. All right, so in my sources here, you see now in addition to where I used to just have JavaScript bundles before, now I have a CSS file, which is awesome. So you see that if I look at it in here, I get my shared styles from the footer and my global styles from the body, right? And just to show you again that how awesome the HTML plugin is, is it knows that we have this CSS file now, so it automatically takes care of putting it in the head for us. Um, so we, you see our page still looks the same, just as good. Um, right, so now you're probably wondering like, okay, wait a minute. First of all, where did our um, page styles go. I just see global and shared, and I'll get to that in a second. <laughs> um, also, you might be wondering, like, why the heck would we uh, do this? We just spent all this time reorganizing our stuff to make our uh, CSS more efficient. Why are we bundling it into uh, one file again when I thought we had comments chunk? Well, that's because we have to add some more options. So the first thing we need to do is, uh, instead of passing in just a file name, since we wanna get a little bit more fancy with this, we're going to create uh, an object, an options object. And now we're gonna do file name. And by default, to answer the uh, missing styles question, uh, by default, Webpack will only extract the styles or, or CSS files from initial entry trunks. Right, so again, what does that mean? So in my uh, in my uh, about and home uh, entry chunks, where are they? Up here, right? In my about and home entry chunks, I'm in, uh, I'm importing three things, right? The globals, the uh, the footer is in there because it's a child, and the page specific stuff, right? Um, but here's the thing, right? We have this commons chunk and it's, uh, it's separating out these styles from us, for us. So what we need to do is we need to remind Webpack that we're doing this and say, um, hey, I want you to make sure that you grab CSS from every single chunk because otherwise it's just gonna look at uh, the entry chunks, right? And we have this like unknown chunk here that is uh, compiled as afterwards as a, uh, a process of looking at the two entries, right? Sorry if that didn't make sense. <laughs> um, okay, so we have that. And then uh, this alone will not work because this you're just saying write a single file, but essentially what we wanna do is we wanna break it out into separate files, right? So you have to add one of these uh, identifiers here, which I've gone over in the commons chunk plugin stuff. We have it up here. It's a similar thing when you have multiple entries, right? When you have multiple entries, you also need to define what the file name gets outputted like with this, right? So it's appending uh, home and about here, right? So just like that, we're gonna come down here and we're gonna say, all right, take the chunk name uh, and append it to this string here, which is styles.css. All right, so now that we have that, let's rerun our Webpack process. Okay. All right, so it's reloaded. Now you can see, holy moly, we've got common.styles and we've got about.styles. Crazy, think about that for a second, right? We have one CSS file, which has been figured out is grabbed from the comments because remember the comments chunk plugin takes 
any files that are contained within all entry points and pulls them out into their own separate chunk. Then the extract text plugin is looking through uh, that chunk, sees the comments chunk, and it pulls that stuff out. So essentially now what we have is one file for just CSS contained within the two pages. And then what's left, it goes through the other entry points. So now my I have an about CSS file that just grabs the CSS from uh, the about entry chunk, right? And also if I go to, interesting, if I go to home now and check that out, sources, see I also have a home.styles.css and it has its corresponding home uh, page styles. So that's uh, pretty much it. Um, you can run this in production, like we can, I'm running it with the dev server right now. There's no reason why you can't. Uh, it's just not advisable because it obviously takes a little bit longer to compile. Um, you can imagine the complicated chain we have now, right? So when you require in a CS file, it has to, uh, you know, go through SAS, go through the CSS loader, uh, resolve any files it finds. Um, and then it has to then, once it's bundled, uh, we, we're bundling the comments chunks, it has to figure that out. And then afterwards, it goes through and searches through all the chunks and pulls those out into separate bundles. So you can imagine that that's a little bit of extra work that we don't really need in uh, development. So uh, this would be something I would suggest to put only for development. Um, cool, so in the next few videos, we're gonna look at how to finish this up by adding some production quality stuff like uh, minifying, um, auto prefixer, and uh, yeah, making some build processes.